I've been writing a bit of microfiction this week, so I thought today I'd talk about what microfiction is, why it's worth writing, and how to write it. Then I'm going to talk you through my process step by step and write a brand new 100 word story from scratch. I'll also talk to you about how I've been releasing a few microfiction stories this week. But before I do that, I've got to say I went out in the sun yesterday, which was, you know, a terrible idea, and I did that. I'm not sure how well it'll show on camera, but ow. So what exactly is microfiction? Essentially, it's very short flash fiction. I've seen definitions say that anything under 300 words is classed as microfiction. For me, I've been writing strictly 100 word stories, partly inspired by Laura Besley's new collection of 100 100 word stories, which I'll put a link to in the description down below, but I would highly recommend that collection. It's excellent. Whatever the word count you aspire to, the point of microfiction is telling a story in a very short time, keeping things brief and concise and to the point. It's essentially like writing a story on a post-it note. You can put them together in a collection or you can write each one as a self-contained single work and they can be about anything. Subject matter, perspective, tense, what kind of vocab you use, all of that stuff can be whatever you want it to be. Because it's such a short form, there aren't really as many rules to speak of as there are in longer forms, so it's more experimental in that way. You can make a hundred word story whatever you want. If you want it to be entirely dialogue, you can do that. If you want it to be no dialogue at all, you can do that. If you want it to be from the perspective of a peanut, you could do that, theoretically. If flash fiction is a story in a few moments, then microfiction is a story in a tick of the clock. But why are they worth writing? Well, with all things writing, some of this might come down to preference and what you hope to achieve with what you write. At the centre of my writing is always this aim to leave an impression on the reader or to make them feel something that they'll take away with them. Because that, to me, is what people read for in the first place. They're looking for some kind of experience. The thing I try to aim for most when I'm writing really short fiction is to give someone that chill down their spine at the end of a story. That's the reason that microfiction, in my opinion, is well worth writing, because it's all about that kind of moment. There's no time and space for anything that doesn't matter towards the story. Everything is there for a reason and everything has to count. In that way, I think it teaches you to identify what really matters about your story and also how to communicate that to your reader as clearly and concisely as you can. And that is a skill that you can take across all fiction. It doesn't have to be just short stuff. Learning how to focus on the point of what matters and to write towards that and kind of disregard everything that doesn't contribute to what you're trying to do, I think is really valuable. The aim of microfiction, at least to me, is the very root of what I'm trying to do with my writing. It's a very condensed version of why I write. So surely it's not easy to write. Yeah, it's not, but it's also not as hard as you might be expecting. So how do you do it? I'm gonna run through some general tips first and then I'll sit down and write a story step by step. The first general tip I'd give you is that there aren't really any resources for structure or any kind of beat by beat models for writing a microfiction. Because they're so short, I just think there's not really any point trying to write one like that. I think microfiction is more experimental in its nature, so it would benefit the story more to just go with whatever comes to you. The second tip I'd give you is that it helps to write with a feeling in mind. If you can find out what kind of mood you want your story to have or what you want your reader to feel by the end of it, then that generally helps you with direction and structure to a certain extent. The aim with microfiction is the same as any other writing, is to make the reader feel something, but you only have a hundred words to do it in, so keeping in mind what you want that effect on your reader to be from the off is a really good idea. I find that helps me stay focused on what I'm trying to write about, and it also helps me avoid making a mistake, which is my next tip, and that mistake is favouring some kind of plot. Obviously in a hundred words you're not going to be able to write a hugely complex plot, it still has to be there, but the plot is more of a facilitator for the emotion that you're trying to get across or the feeling that you want to give to your readers. It doesn't really carry the same weight as it might in a short story or a novel. So don't worry too much if you can't figure out what exactly has to happen in your story, because most of the impact of microfiction, as far as I'm concerned anyway, happens within the mind of the characters or the mind of the reader rather than actions and events. So I'm going to write a brand new 100 word story now. I'll take you through my process step by step. So 
This approach might not be the best one ever, but it does work for me, so I'm hoping maybe it can give you a head start if nothing else. Like all stories, microfiction starts with an idea. But unlike novels and longer stuff, those ideas don't have to be that detailed. They almost shouldn't be that detailed because you don't have the time or the space. Ideas that are small enough, but also rich enough to make a microfiction story out of, I find don't come to me all that readily. But I do have a solution if you don't have an idea yet, and this is something I use when I don't have ideas, which I don't at the moment. I'm talking about writing prompts, of which there's a couple of kinds. Let's look at the first kind. So the first kind of writing prompts can be quite specific and they can give you solid ideas and scenarios and even characters sometimes. So let's have a look at some of those. So write about a character who has to rely on the hospitality of strangers or start your story in an empty guest room. These kind of prompts I find are really good for stuff like flash fiction because they give you just a wide enough scenario or a detailed enough scene to build something out of. However, I don't tend to find that they work for me when I'm trying to come up with a microfiction idea because it kind of gives me too much information to get in or it gives me too much direction. And because you're writing something very short and something very pointed and directed, sometimes it can feel too hard to get that on target. So I'll use those for flash fiction and stuff sometimes, but they're not how I come up with ideas for microfiction. How I get those ideas is in a slightly different way, which is method two, I suppose. The second method really isn't a writing prompt necessarily. It's a random word generator. So I'll go to a random word generator like this one and pick two words or pick for it to generate two words. And from those words, I'll try to come up with some kind of story idea. And the idea of this, by the way, is not to test myself and see what I can make a story out of or what two random words I can kind of shoehorn into a story that's not really the exercise. The exercise really for me is to keep clicking the button until I get a combination of words that sparks some kind of story idea for me. So fur and publication, not doing it for me. So I'm gonna click the button again. Brainstorm and generate, ironic, but not bringing a story to mind. Meal and mouth, still not. So I'm just gonna keep clicking this until I come up with something that sparks a story idea for me. Okay, so far an imposter. As soon as this combination of words came to mind, I started to see some kind of story in my mind or some kind of scene in my mind about an imposter far away from where they're supposed to be. So that's enough of a route, I think, for me to start trying to think of a story from. That's enough to generate some kind of idea. So what I'll do now is I'll just go into an empty document and see what happens. So the first thing I've done is write those two words at the top of the page just so that I can see the prompt. I'm quite a visual person so having things in my eye line tends to help. What I'd normally do now is just sit and think and let ideas come to me but because I'm making a video about this and documenting my process I'll talk through those ideas as they come to me which is really difficult but so there's a road. A road is is the image that came to me. And I'm writing a story at the moment, coincidentally made of other uh, 100 word stories. And a desert features pretty prominently in that story. So that the desert, the, the road that I saw immediately is in a desert. So I'm gonna write desert road. The word far to me suggests travel, a long journey, which obviously ties into the road. And it also suggests fatigue or exhaustion. So I'm gonna put, those words into my prompt sheet as well. So the word imposter, if you happen to have read anything that I've written and I've got a flash fiction novella called Gold Fury, which is available on Amazon, links in the description, my writing tends towards crime. There's always an element of crime. It's literary crime really, but there's always something criminal related in all of my writing pretty much. And imposter is bringing to mind something of that ilk something criminal so that's the stuff that i'm working with and as i said before in the in the general approach the general tips i always want to write with an emotion in mind and an impact that i want to give to the reader and in this case i want to do a bit of an inversion because i want to make this a sympathetic character or a character that the audience is sympathetic with so even though they're an imposter and they're a criminal I want to make the emotion that I aim for be loneliness or isolation. 
which obviously works with the setting because it's a desert road. You know, it's pretty easy to imagine isolation, also tiredness and exhaustion. So it's someone at the end of their tether, I think, and that kind of fits with the initial idea that I had. So that's the emotion I'm gonna keep in mind when I try to write. That's the effect I wanna have on the reader is to make them think of isolation. And all, always when you bring an emotion to mind with whatever you're writing, the, the idea is to make your reader put themselves into that character's position because that's empathy, that's sympathy, that's how we identify with characters in stories. So I need to think about how I can do that and try and make it happen in a hundred words. So I'm going to sit and try to write it now. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I've written a story, the working title of which is Carrion Birds. Um, it went pretty well, I think, as well as it can do from a prompt um, when I didn't have initial inspiration for a story. Those stories always work out better when I already know what I want to write before I start writing, but working off a prompt can produce decent results too. They might just need a little bit more editing, which is probably the case for this one, but I've got a decent draft down. It's 100 words exactly, and that just kind of happened. I was trying for 100 words, but it just worked out 100 words without too much editing required, so that's useful. I was going to just read it to you and let you hear the finished version, but I've got a better way of showing you the story, I think. I mentioned earlier on that I'd tell you a way that I've been releasing microfiction stories this week, so I wanna talk about that. Essentially, I've started a second YouTube channel, which is all about stories. I wanted a way to tell stories in a quick, digestible way, because I know that quite often these days, people don't always have the time to invest in a long piece of work, so I was looking for something that I could write a decent story with, that could be condensed into just 60 seconds. So I've started creating videos of these microfiction stories with a, a little bit of imagery, a little bit of music and some sound effects. They're all less than a minute, self-contained stories. I'm also posting them to TikTok, so if you're on there, that's a good place to find the stories too. The story that I wrote today, Carrion Birds, I'll create a video for, and then by the time this video goes live, it'll already be live on the second channel, and I'll put a link to it in the description down below so you can see what it was that I actually ended up writing today. I'd love it if you could go over to the second channel and subscribe on there, or follow me on TikTok, or do both if you're feeling really generous. All the links are down in the description. This trend for 60 second content really doesn't seem to be going anywhere. And for a while now, I've been trying to think how writing related content or storytelling content could fit into just 60 seconds. And I think with 100 word stories, there's an opportunity to do that. And while it's absolutely not the ideal format for the written word or for storytelling in general, what it does do is test me and see what I'm able to write and see what I can get across to a reader in just 60 seconds. So I'm using it as an opportunity to develop some skills that I wouldn't otherwise develop. So it's an experiment. I'll see if it works. I'd strongly advise you to try a bit of microfiction because it's really got a lot of benefits to longer work as well as shorter work. And it's just really satisfying to write really condensed short stories and like what you've done with them. Also, they're really quick to edit, which is, you know, always a nice thing. Try my approach and take what parts of it work for you and disregard the rest. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching as always and happy writing.